Welcome to the Culture of Healthcare, Health Professionals, the People in Healthcare. This is Lecture B. The component, the culture of healthcare, addresses job expectations in healthcare settings, the organization of patient care within a practice setting, privacy laws, and professional and ethical issues encountered in the workplace. The objectives for health professionals, the people in healthcare, are to define terms used in healthcare and in health professionals' education and training, including clinician, patient consumer, disease, and syndrome. Describe the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of physicians, including those in primary care and other specialties. Describe the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of nurses, advanced practice nurses, licensed practical nurses, medical assistants, and medication aides. Describe the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of physician assistants, pharmacists, therapists, and allied health professionals. Describe the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of paramedics, emergency medical technicians, dental professionals, mental health professionals, and social workers. This lecture describes the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of nurses. There are several ways to become a registered nurse, or RN. Diploma programs were more common in the past and were usually two- to three-year programs that focused mostly on clinical skills. An associate's degree in nursing is a two-year program with a similar clinical focus. The BSN, or Bachelor of Science degree in nursing, is the preferred degree program. It includes general study requirements, math, science, social sciences, and humanities, along with preclinical and clinical coursework. Nurses with a diploma or an associate's degree may be able to attain a BSN using a bridge program that allows them to apply credit for courses already taken. Advanced nurse practitioner opportunities require a BSN along with additional study in the area of specialization. Also, most nursing administration positions require a BSN and may require a graduate level degree such as a master's degree in nursing. Clinical training is a part of all three types of training programs. It includes coursework to gain an understanding of clinical principles and clinical work in hospitals and other healthcare provider settings under direct supervision. New graduate entry-level nurses must work under the supervision of a licensed, experienced nurse until they obtain their state nursing license, which is achieved by passing an exam. Also, nurses may elect to specialize in their area of clinical practice, which is achieved through additional training programs provided by hospitals and other organizations. Formal certification is not required for most nurses at the RN or BSN level. However, many nursing certifications are offered in a variety of clinical specialty areas, such as cardiac medicine, emergency nursing, medical surgical nursing, and pediatric nursing. Specialty certification may be obtained for work settings other than the hospital environment. For example, a hospice nurse often works in patients' homes and may earn a Certified Hospice and Palliative Nurse, or CHPN, certification through the Hospice and Palliative Credentialing Center. Hospice nurses provide care for patients and their families with life-limiting illness or injury. Specialty certification may also be obtained for non-clinical nursing roles. For example, the American Nurses Association offers certification in nursing informatics. Certification programs generally have prerequisites for eligibility and require participants to pass an exam. Licensure requires completion of an accredited program and passing the National Council Licensure Exam Registered Nurse, or NCLEX-RN. The NCLEX-RN is a nationally administered test required by all states and the District of Columbia. It is administered by the National Council of State Boards of Nursing. Like physician licensure, specific requirements are determined by the states, and there is some opportunity for obtaining reciprocal licenses in other states. Nurses provide direct patient care and are responsible for coordinating patient care activities with other ancillary or allied health professionals based on physicians' orders and the patient's plan of care. In the last decade, nursing assistants, medical assistants, or patient care associates have assumed much of the direct bedside patient care, such as obtaining vital signs and assisting patients with activities of daily living, such as eating, sleeping, and hygiene. 
These positions work under the supervision of nursing staff, freeing nurses to provide highly skilled care to more patients. Nursing duties include taking a medical history, starting and maintaining intravenous fluids, bedside laboratory testing, medication administration, wound care, and ongoing assessment and patient monitoring of physiological parameters. Also, nurses have a prominent role in providing education and emotional support to patients and their families. A significant amount of nursing care in hospitals occurs on medical surgical units. In some hospitals, both medical and surgical patients are cared for in a single unit. Other hospitals have separate units for these patients. Medical surgical nurses may be certified, but certification is not required by most hospitals. There is an increased need for specialized nursing units or departments in larger and tertiary care hospitals. Nurses may elect to obtain additional training and education when working in these areas. Examples of specialized nursing roles include the following. Diabetic nursing plays a prominent role in the education of clients newly diagnosed with diabetes. Emergency nursing provides highly skilled care in emergency departments and trauma centers. Rehabilitation nursing focuses on patients recovering from serious injuries or illnesses that require specialized care in recovering activities of daily living. Neurosurgery nursing provides care to patients who have brain and or spinal cord injury or disease. Many hospitals have evolved to become integrated delivery networks or systems with separate physical buildings on one campus or many buildings across a geographic location. This organizational arrangement enables the hospital to provide more services to a larger number of patients. The more common type of patient care services that are located in a separate building at a single location or across multiple locations include pediatric care, cardiac care, rehabilitation, and cancer care. Nurses serve a critical role in providing patient care not only in hospital settings, but also in many other types of provider settings, such as physician offices, outpatient clinics, clients' homes, and more. Nurses may choose to further their education with specialized training and or certification for working in a non-hospital setting. A few examples of these other setting types include the following. Ambulatory care facilities, such as walk-in or general care clinics, outpatient surgery clinics, urgent care centers. Nursing roles are similar to those of their hospital counterparts. The main difference is that the patient is at the facility for a very short duration and will not stay overnight. Home health, hospice, patient's medical home. Nurses provide care through daily or frequent visits to the patient's home. Activities include medication administration, wound care, post-operative care, and physical therapy. Long-term care in nursing homes. Nurses provide care and or assist the patient with routine activities of daily living. Public health clinics, community health facilities. The public health nurse provides screenings, disease surveillance, health promotion, and education. Nurse practitioners are usually required to earn a master's degree in nursing with specific clinical and diagnostic training. This includes training in physical diagnosis, managing acute and chronic disease, wellness care, and prescribing medication. Most states require certification for a nurse practitioner regardless of the specialty. Most practitioner specialties focus on a specific population. A few examples are family nurse practitioner, pediatric nurse practitioner, and geriatric nurse practitioner. All states license nurse practitioners, but states vary on the role of the nurse practitioner. About half of the states allow nurses to practice independently, and some states allow nurse practitioners to prescribe medication without physician oversight. Nurse practitioners typically provide primary care services, including preventive, acute, and chronic care. A BSN is required to become a certified nurse midwife, and most complete a master's degree in nursing. Training entails courses in advanced practice nursing, including pharmacology, pathophysiology, and physical diagnosis. Nurse midwife certification requires coursework in antepartum care, prenatal or before delivery, intrapartum care, during delivery, and postpartum care, after delivery. It also involves clinical coursework and training in the routine care of women's health. Only a few nurse midwife programs are post-baccalaureate certificate programs. Licensure is required in all 50 states and the District of Columbia. 
Nurse midwives provide routine gynecology services, prenatal, delivery, and postnatal care. Nurse anesthetists must have a BSN degree. A master's degree is required to be eligible for a certified registered nurse anesthetist, or CRNA. Training courses in advanced practice nursing include pharmacology, pathophysiology, and physical diagnosis. Clinical courses include training in anesthesia, simulation labs, and supervised training in clinical anesthesia. Certification as a CRNA requires graduation from an accredited master's degree program and passing the national certification exam administered by the Council on Certification of Nurse Anesthetists. Although there is no recertification exam, there is a requirement of 40 hours of continuing education every two years. CRNAs are licensed in every state. However, there is some variation in whether they are able to practice independently. As with any healthcare profession, there are opportunities for non-clinical roles. They sometimes require additional nursing or other graduate degrees. Nurse administrators are common in both hospitals and ambulatory settings. Nurses can serve an active role in both basic and clinical research. They provide clinical and non-clinical teaching in nursing schools and in continuing nursing education. There is also a need for nurses to be involved in case management and quality improvement. As it is for physicians, informatics is a relatively new role for nurses. Informatics focuses on the effective use of information systems in providing patient care services. A licensed practical nurse, or LPN, has a shorter period of training, usually 12 to 18 months after high school graduation. Preclinical training includes basic sciences such as pharmacology, anatomy, and physiology, and preclinical nursing courses such as medical terminology. Clinical courses include practical nursing studies with patient care under supervision, including infusing IV fluids and administration of oral and some IV medications. LPNs often receive a certificate of completion. All states and the District of Columbia require the National Council Licensure Exam Practical Nurse, or NCLEX-PN, administered by the National Council of State Boards of Nursing, or NCSBN. LPNs provide direct patient care and must be under the supervision of an RN or physician. State laws vary on whether LPNs may start and monitor IV fluids and administer IV medications. Most states that allow IV medication administration do not allow LPNs to push or rapidly infuse medications. Medical assistants usually complete a one-year certificate or a two-year associate's degree. The training involves both medical and office administration courses, which often include medical terminology, coding and reimbursement, laboratory procedures, office patient care, and medications. Medical assistants are not licensed, and roles include administrative and clinical duties. The education and training of medication aides ranges widely from 15 to 70 contact hours. The training is predominantly on the administration of non-intravenous medications. Most states require an exam and a period of supervised medication administration. Some states require training as a certified nursing assistant as a prerequisite. In most states, medication aides can administer oral, topical, and nebulized or metered inhaled medication. Many states restrict medication aids to long-term care or assisted living facilities. Certification may be obtained for successful completion of the educational course. Employment projections released in December 2013 anticipated a shortage of nurses by 2025. In contrast, a 2014 HRSA study projected that nursing supply could outpace demand by 2025. The contrasting studies reflect the changing employment environment for clinical workers. The HRSA study, for instance, further stated that uneven distribution of nurses will result in shortfalls in several states and noted that retirements and other factors could shift projections. One factor that could limit the expansion of nursing supply is a shortage of nursing faculty. In addition to the current shortage, existing faculty are aging and retiring, and there are not enough qualified applicants available to replace them. In addition, the need for advanced nurse practitioners is anticipated to increase to supplement the physician's role in providing direct patient care. This is due in part to the anticipated physician shortage, along with the need of skilled clinicians in the ambulatory setting 
as patient care shifts from the inpatient setting to the outpatient and home settings. As with the physician shortage, offsetting a potential nursing shortage will require a multi-pronged approach with industry-wide collaborators. This concludes Lecture B of Health Professionals, the People in Healthcare. In summary, this lecture described the education, training, certification, licensure, and roles of nursing personnel, including nurses with RN and BSN degrees, advanced practice nurses, licensed practical nurses, medical assistants, and medication aides. Roles are also described for nurses in specific work settings, specialty areas, and non-clinical positions.